Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to another episode of NotAnalog.com. Today I'm looking at the Nikon AW110. Now, it is a tough as nails camera. You can go swimming with this in the water, which is up to 18 meters waterproof. You can drop it from a height of two meters and it won't mind. So when it's wet, you just shake it off. If it gets in the dirt, just dust it off. You can really take it absolutely anywhere. If your kids, if your toddlers want to take photos and you're usually afraid of handing them your camera, this one you won't need to because it's tough. Now, it doesn't mean that because it's a tough camera that it's all wrapped in hard plastic and it's completely unusable. It's not. It still has a 16 megapixel camera. It records in full high definition, which is 1080p video. Um, it still has a five times optical zoom on it. So even though it doesn't have a, a lens that pops out of the camera, you can still get a decent sort of zoom on it as well. Um, the LCD on the back is actually an OLED display and it's up to three inches, which is quite good. Plenty of room to see your picture. It's got GPS on it. So you know what that means? It means that when you're on holidays and you're snapping all of these pictures wherever you are, on, in the world, it will be able to locate you on a map which means that when you're looking through the pictures, you can get a reminder of where you were, which direction you were facing in as well, because it has a built-in electronic compass, and it sometimes will even pair it with points of interest as well. So if you're standing in front of the Opera House, it will also remind you of what you were looking at, because sometimes, and I know from my travel experiences, I'll take pictures of, of a building, and you know it's famous, but you forget what it was even called, because you may have had a few wines, and this will be able to tell you, so it's kind of your little companion for when you travel. Um, now, it's got Wi-Fi built in, so if you want to share your images very quickly, synchronize them to your computer, synchronize them to your phone through Wi-Fi, you can do that with this camera as well, which is kind of neat, especially if you are traveling, like I said. Now, I mentioned the maps. The, um, it does go underwater, and I did use it underwater, which was really cool. You do get nervous when you throw technology underwater, especially when it's not your own. Um, it's got a locking mechanism on the side, which you twist and pop out, and that's where you get to your card and the battery and things like that. And you can tell that from that locking mechanism that it is ready to go underwater. I love that. It kind of gives that peace of mind, that assurance that you're locking something in, and it's not just... Oh my gosh, I hope it doesn't you know, get destroyed when I go in the water. That was really cool. The video mode on this um, can shoot up to 120 frames per second. Now I must tell you that above 30 frames per second, you lose audio. And if you're by default, you're thinking, oh great, I want it 60 frames per second because that's beautiful and I can do so much more with it. Well, you can in terms of video, but you lose the audio file. And that's kind of upsetting, especially if you don't know that. So I got caught out, I was shooting video at 60 frames per second locked it back and I'm like, where the hell is my audio? And then I discovered 30 frames per second is where the audio limit stops. So keep that in mind if you do decide to get this camera. Not that 30 frames per second is a big deal. These videos that I shoot on my SLR, I shoot at 25 frame, frames per second. So, so be it. Now, when I did have audio, when I had audio, it was great. Audio was clear. You got these microphone um, inputs on the front and they do a very good job. So no problem there. The GPS was really quick to locate me and I really appreciated that because when I do take photos, I'm turning it on, I'm taking the picture, I'm turning it off. And that wasn't really a problem for the camera at all. I love the fact that it does notice um, as a compass, which is really cool. And you know what, if you're hiking and you're lost, that kind of comes in handy too because you can just use this as your compass and that's something that you can't normally do. Um, besides that, it's a pretty simple camera. The controls on it aren't too difficult. The menu system is not bad. It's not the best I've ever seen, but it's not bad, especially for when you want easy access to things. The different types of function you can use is quite good. The autofocus on this isn't great. So if you leave it in full on auto mode and you just want the camera to do all the work for you, you can expect the majority of your images are going to be average. But if you want to capture a shot perfectly, the best way to do it is to go into the settings and make sure, make sure you choose the right mode. So if it's a close-up shot, for example, leaving it in auto may not always get you a very good close-up shot. Manually setting the camera to be close-up, it will get you a good close-up shot. So you do need to work with the camera as well. It's not going to do everything for you, so bear that in mind. But if I was traveling and I knew I was going to be swimming, I knew I was going to be doing some rough terrain stuff, this would be a really cool camera to take with you because you wouldn't have to worry about breaking it. And in fact, if you did break your camera when you're on holidays, it's kind of not something you can easily replace while you're away. So check it out, the Nikon AW110. It's really, really neat for those people who want to go anywhere and take photos and take video. Make sure you check the frame rate. And uh, yeah, it's not that expensive either. So check it out, Nikon AW110. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.